So the FX Pocket Chronograph, we know for a little while, $200, the best $200 I've ever spent on uh, an item to help me tune my air guns. But now its bigger brother has arrived. Oh shit! The FX Pocket Chronograph, probably one of those must-have tools in your shooting bag when you're serious about air gunning and tuning them. This little guy took away all the hassle of the other chronographs with setting them up with light deflectors and when the sun was too bright it was not working correctly, when there was not enough light it was not working correctly and this one completely changed all this because it's a little radar, it doesn't need any light, you can mount it to your barrel, next to your barrel on a separate setup, underneath your barrel, it just works and it was really cool. Uh, it really changed the way how I go about and tune my air guns and really need to uh, learn me how my air guns were working and how to get them accurate, of course. But now its bigger brother has arrived and it's the True Ballistics Chronograph by FX Outdoor. It's a little bit more advanced, it has some extra tricks up its sleeve. So in this video, we'll see what you get in the box, how to set it up and start using it, of course. Let's get started. Right, so the True Ballistics Chronograph by FX comes in this nice uh, rubbery feel case, a really premium case to store your uh, ballistics chronograph, but what's inside is what we're here, of course. So let's open it up. A nice case with some protection on the inside, which is always good to protect it, of course. You get a nice uh, manual from FX Outdoors, quick start, how to set it up, some extra information, and uh, I do uh, advise to read it. As men, we don't like to read manuals, but sometimes it's very interesting or very helpful when you need some information. Then you get yourself the True Ballistics Chronograph itself, of course, but a little bit more on that in just a second. And the only other thing in the box is a uh, USB-C cable to charge it up, of course, because the True Ballistics Chronograph has a built-in um, battery, which you can charge and goes a long way when you're using it. Uh, and it's chargeable, as I mentioned, with the USB-C. Very useful, of course. So let's take out the True Ballistics Chronograph, close up the case again. And what's nice about the True Ballistics Chronograph to set it up is that it's actually enclosed in its own casing, as you can see, just like this, protecting everything that's inside. And the case itself acts as a stand to mount it, of course. So what you do is you put your two thumbs on the outside cutout right here, and you can take it out just like this. And then you have two parts. You have the radar itself, and you have the, the foot or the feet, or how do you want to call it. And inside you have a thumb screw, which uh, is nicely fixed in position. And on the bottom of the chronograph itself, you have the connection to fit it in right there. You can also use this connection, of course, to mount it to a tripod, if you rather use a tripod instead of uh, the, foot, the feet that comes with it. So simply put it in, thread the screw in from the bottom, and just like this, your chronograph is set up. Very easy to do, it has its own stand, you can just put it next to your rifle, but a little bit more on that in just a second. And that's all there is to do it. Very easy to set up, don't have to hang it on your barrel, you don't have to mount it to a different uh, setup or whatever. Just plunk it there, make sure it's in the right uh, angle and align, and then uh, you can start using it. So, now, let's uh, take a rifle out of the case, put it next to it, and see how we can start using it. Let's first also scroll through the menu to see what kind of settings and options we can adjust. So, let me set it up and I'll be right back. Right, so I had to move a little bit out of the sun because the reflection in the glass was a little bit too strong and you couldn't see much what was happening. But this is your setup from the front, the little port you see right here. That's uh, to connect your USB-C cable for charging it. You can also bring yourself a um, power bank or something to keep it charged, but the battery inside will last a long time. To put it on, you press the button at the bottom, through ballistics chronograph, when I push it now, it starts sending out radar signals. So now at this point, nothing is transmitting and it can be just put like this. Once, so once I press this again, it will start reading this, but a little bit more on that in just a second. At the top corner, you see config, so you can open this up. The four buttons correspond with what's written there, up, down, select and save. So the first thing is velocity range and the velocity range is between 400 and 4,000 feet per second. So for uh, air guns and for uh, powder burners, 
perfect. You can uh, go up and down, but there is only one setting for the moment, so we just press select. Then, go to primary unit, press select. You can choose between feet per second, meters per second, joules or foot pounds of energy. And with the buttons right here, you can go through it. I would like to have it in feet per second, of course. One more down, you have the second unit. And the second unit will read what you want, also feet per second, meters per second, joules or, feet per, or uh, foot pounds of energy. So I will have chose, chosen the foot pounds of energy. Weight units. Um, depends where you are in the world. You like to calculate in grains or use the grain number or the gram number, that's up to you. But for easy, because it's written on every package, I went for grains, of course. Distance unit. You can choose between meters or yards, depending on where you are in the world. For me, meters is the most convenient. We can go one more down. Then you get four distances. That's the distances or the uh, increments that the chronograph will read the distance for uh, the projectile you're shooting. So at this distance number one, I have put 25 meters. And with the buttons on the side, you can increase or decrease the range, of course. So my first one is at 25. My second one I've put on 50 meters, the third one at 75, and the fourth one at 100 meters. So now it will give me increments at velocities at these kind of stages. Depending on where you put them, you get, of course, different uh, velocities. Then projectile weight, depending on the weight you're shooting. We were just testing now with some hybrid slugs, 22 grains, but with the buttons on the side, you can go up and down and uh, put in the correct weight, of course, for the projectile you're shooting. Then you have barrel offset, barrel offset between 0 and 20 centimeters, which is best, that's the only option you can choose. And this means how far away uh, next to your barrel you put the chronograph. So you can put it right next to your barrel or at 20 centimeters maximum for the best results, of course. Then you have channel, this has to do with the uh, megahertz and transmitting stuff. Shutdown time, when it shuts down by itself, I've put it at 240 seconds. I'll see, this was a uh, from factory put like this. And after 240 seconds without use, probably it will shut down by itself and preserve the battery. Drag model, you have the G1 and the G7. I've chosen the G1, the G7 probably is more for the power uh, burning world, but G1 is what we use for air guns. And then you have Bluetooth, and you can put Bluetooth on or off. And this is uh, very important because the True Ballistics Chronograph also talks to the app on your phone, uh, calculating some holdover points and stuff, average velocities, which also this does by itself inside here. But on your phone, you can save it, you can export it, and a lot of things like this. But this we will look at it in a second. And just, just about it, Inter interference. Uh, indicator on or off, meaning if there is some interference from other radio signals uh, messing up your uh, readings, of course. And then you have exit without saving, but I'm just going to press save right on top here to uh, save all the settings that I have. That's the internal memory, so let's set it up on the bench and shoot a little bit. All right, so I got my setup all set up right here with the chronograph right next to my barrel. So remember, the distance between this is about maximum 20 centimeters and about zero for uh, the minimum. Then you align that little straw you see here on top. It's like a little uh, aiming device on top of it, right at your target. So the beam is exactly straight in line with your barrel and you get the best accurate results. The first thing we gotta do is jump in to the FX radar. And uh, the chronograph is not turned on yet, but we'll do that just in a second. The first thing I want to do is to create a profile. So when I add the add profile one, I get a, a small box. When I swipe to the right, I press edit. And there you can fill in the name of your gun or something. So in my case, it's a FX Impact 30. So I know it's a 30 caliber. First up, I'll be shooting some 50 grain uh, JSB pellets. So I fill in uh, JSB and they are exactly 50.15 grains, 50.15, safe. So now I have a profile that goes together with um, my gun, of course, to record the data that I need. Then we'll press, so I hope 
the crew at the because the sun is coming from the front i hope you can still see what the gopro records here so with the press on the button the true ballistics program starts up and then i tap once more to activate it and straightly you can see maybe i'll take the gopro like this it measures at 25 50 75 and 100. going into the configuration and i go down to projectile weight select you can see i already filled in 50 grains which is exactly what i need press save again start to activate now when we take a look at our chronograph and press home you see one device connect connect with this device and there you have it all set up and now the chronograph is talking with bluetooth to your phone where you can save all your data that you want so first thing we're going to do is collect some data with the 50 grains that i have right here so we're going to shoot about 10 shots to over 100 meters so it can calculate in increments those um, those shots of course so let's see and of course you have to put in a magazine of course Eight eighty one, eight seventy four. It was sitting in the sun. Maybe it's a little bit. Eight eighty two, eight seventy four, eight eighty four. Eight eighty three, eight eighty three, eight eighty eight. Tune could be maybe just a little bit better, but that's already very good, as you can see. Uh, where we are? That's uh, how many shots did we have now? Nine. So one more. 884 pretty consistent as you can see and now at the bottom you can see uh, the bc and the average velocity when you press show it gives you the whole range with the adjustments for your scope of course um, to fill in something very important is also the scope height so when uh, you jump into settings and you go to general you can see uh, your profile name the fx impact 30 you can add the uh, shot count of your magazine so your app can warn you when you're uh, when you're running out of pellets or when you're on your last shot pellet options that's what we filled in before you can also add that it's a diablo because we're shooting pellets of course and the scope height in my case this is 5.8 and i forgot to fill in this before 5.8 centimeters like this application settings you don't need to do anything there you can go into units that's everything you adjusted right there the audio you can put on your primary reading secondary reading or the empty magazine warning as i mentioned before but i really don't like this and the calibration mode plus or minus two percent but this i'm not going to be busy with on the shot string page you can see all your information so we had a shot count of 10 a high of 888 and a low of 874 those were those few shots uh, set before settling in with a standard deviation of 4.4 of course you can get this much better if i spend a little bit more time tuning the whole system of course and my average velocity is 881 pretty good what i'm looking for with a bc of 0 0.04 with the distances that it has measured them of course now as you can see uh, we start with at 25 meters with 803 at uh, 50 meters we still have 736 at 75 meters 676 and at 100 meters we have 622 feet per second so it slows down quite a bit and it's very interesting to see now finally with this uh, true ballistics chronograph what your pellet is actually doing at these kind of distances as i mentioned before when you go to average bullet and you push show then you can see everything what adjustments you have to make on your scope in order to hit some basic targets now mine is sided in at 50 meters whoops as you can see at 50 meters i don't have to make any corrections and for 100 i have to make about 44 clicks to hit my target 
you can see my scope angle is 504 uh, mil radians and that is very important when you now switch to a different palette you can calculate the difference uh, how much adjustment you have to make when you're uh, with the 50 grains have a zero on 50 meters when you want to shoot with 56 grains for instance because i still have some zane 56 grains at 50 meters you can calculate how much uh, when you switch between ammunition how much adjustment you have to make on your scope to do that so in order to do that if i remember correctly we go to profile i swipe to the right i press copy i open that one up then remove the copy Let's put Zane, those are 56 grains, save. And then we can make a new string. So let me quickly fill the magazine with those pallets. So I'll fill the magazine with some 56 grain uh, Zane pallets. Let's, uh, reactivate the chronograph because the 240 seconds probably have uh, been going by. You have to hold and press a little bit longer to activate it again. Probably it's in some kind of sleep mode. So we are connected again. In the profiles we have made now the profile for the Zane 56 grains. So we're just gonna Go ahead, shoot also 10 shots with this one. Let's aim again for a little bit further. Make sure we are past 100 meters so it can calculate everything. A20, that's exactly where I left it last time. As you can see, it reads pretty fast every time. How many shots is this? Shot number seven. And one more. like this. And as you can see, the rifle here is a little bit more tuned according to the Zane 56 grain pellets. We have a spread of 10 with a standard deviation of 2.8 over 10 shots, which is pretty cool. It also calculated an average velocity of 825. Last time when I was shooting at 100 meters, uh, 820 to 825 was really accurate. So uh, that's where I left it last time, of course. The BC is 0 0.06. That's uh, thanks to the ballistics chronograph with the increments at different uh, 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 lengths, of course, of distances, it can calculate a more accurate uh, BC for your given conditions at a given day, because one day it's a little bit warmer, one day the humidity is a little bit higher and stuff like this. So therefore you get a much more accurate ballistic coefficient that you can fill into your uh, Straylock Pro or whatever you want. Um, it also calculates here, as I said before, so we go to average bullet and we press show. Uh, we have a sight in range at 50 meters normally. Uh, it also reads the scope angle there at the top. That's everything you need to use from now on. Uh, and as you can see at 50, normally it should be spot on. But let's say um, we switched from the 50 grains to the 56 grains. I have to make sure I explain this correctly uh, because also in my head it was a little bit difficult to understand. But once you know it, I think uh, it will be very easy. So we press close on this one. I go to my profile. I select the one for the 50 grains. And what I want to do is calculate how much adjustment do I have to make on my scope um, to, uh, to see what kind of uh, uh, adjustment I have to make in order to also have the, sa the same impact when I, once I switch to the 56 grains. I hope that's clear. So um, we have that profile. We say average shots and you can see my scope angle is 5.04. That's what we have to remember. We go to the Zane show. And now instead of sight in range, I say scope angle 5.04, close. No, shouldn't have pressed closed, just enter was good enough. And now when I go to 50, you can see I need three clicks up in adjustment in order for um, 
to hit my same target at the 50 meters. So then you just make one, two, three, like this. And now I should be spot on at 50 meters. Where is my 50 meter target? It's a small spinner. Of course I just passed it. And there you have it, it's a straight hit. Um, the only thing I just see now is that between the 50 grains and the 56 grains, um, there is a small difference between left and right, which is very uh, possible, of course, because you're switching between different M and inches. Um, but the elevation is spot on, hitting that spinner uh, at just, just exactly where I want it to be. So that's the idea behind it. You can have different pallet weights and just by using the app, it also automatically uh, takes your weather conditions into account to calculate all that stuff. Um, it just can give you with a simple scope angle to fill in how much adjustment you have to make on your scope in order to hit the target. So if in one time you go for your zeroed with the JSBs, just to recap of course, when you um, zeroed with the JSBs at 50 grains, at 50 meters or at 100 meters, it doesn't matter, then you uh, take um, your 56 grains, you fill in the scope angle that you calculated with your uh, uh, 50 grains, fill that in to your 56 grains and the uh, application will give you the adjustment you have to put on your scope in order to hit your elevation at that target. As mentioned before, of course, you can have a left to right small deviation because the pellets are different made, different uh, manufacturers, and therefore you can have a little shift left to right, but your elevation should be spot on. Really cool um, chronograph, I must say, and still probably a lot to learn and a lot to be busy with, but for me, really cool new accessory for my range bag. Now something else very useful of course, once you, uh, you can of course uh, record everything on your phone, but you can also see everything on the chronograph itself. Right here at the bottom, you have next, and then it calculates your uh, foot pounds of energy, of course, at the same distances, like you have the velocity distances at different uh, ranges. When you press again, you also get, like you have on your phone, a complete uh, overview of um, how the different uh, uh, shots, how um, much your deviation, your ballistic coefficient, your average ballistic coefficient and all kind of that stuff. So you can really use it as a standalone unit without your phone of course as well. And sorry, there you have it guys. That's a quick look at what the uh, FX ballistic chronograph is all about. Of course, the pocket chronograph will always have a place in my range bag uh, when I quickly need to uh, check my velocities and stuff and don't have the big uh, chronograph radar here with me. It has a ton of extra features as you could see over this one. It can measure your uh, distances or your velocity at different distances, your uh, power at different distances. It can also calculate when you switch between ammunition how much adjustment you have to make on your scope. A really neat little, uh, not really little, but really neat tool to have in your uh, shooting arsenal when you're serious about air gunning and tuning them, of course. Um, the size might be a problem for some of you, but when you're carrying around so much gear as I do, to the range, um, putting this extra in your bag, it's just about, uh, it's a little bit smaller than A4 paper, and it's when everything is packed together, it's just about a few centimeters high, so which is pretty fun. Really happy with the new chronograph, and I will have a lot of fun and a lot of extra information when I'm tuning my air guns, of course, and that's the FX Ballistic Chronograph. I hope you would find this video uh, informative. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section down below. Uh, the sun is coming out, it's a little bit warm here, but I still have to practice a little bit for RMAC that's coming up in less than 14 days now, so uh, time is limited and I have to get going. Uh, thank you for watching. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you back in the next one. Bye.